डियर स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू ई पी जी पाठशाला आई एम डॉक्टर वाई एस राजपूत एमिलिटर साइंटिस्ट वर्किंग एट एनिमल बायो केमिस्ट्री डिवीजन नेशनल डेयरी रिसर्च इंस्टीट्यूट करनाल टूडे आई विल बी टीचिंग यू वन ऑफ द बायो केमिकल टेक्निक रेफर्ड एज हाइब्रिडोमा टेक्नोलॉजी दिस टेक्निक इज डिफरेंट from many other biochemical techniques which we have covered in different modules module on hybridoma technology is covered under two different parts this is part b of the module it is advised that students learn first part a and then proceed to part b synchronization work plan is required to obtain sufficient number of myelomas grown for at least 3 generations in log phase and have viability greater than 99% on the date of fusion the cells can be maintained in log phase in 25 cm square flask and finally expanded in 2 to 25 cm square flask spleen is to be aseptically collected from immunized mouse and can be transferred to cell culture lab cells from spleen are to be collected in laminar flow by gently pressing spleen with piston of disposable syringe spleen cells are fusion partner and fused with myeloma cells differentiated b cells present in spleen cell population actually fuses with myeloma cells all differentiated b cell will not make fused cells which will make antibodies against identified antigen only differentiated b cells primed for making desired antibody on fusion with myeloma cells can make fruitful hybrids immunization is carried out to increase abundance of such b cells which will finally synthesize the desired antibodies valve c in red mouse is immunized with antigen when antibody titer is ensured spleen from such animal is used for source of b cells in fusion experiment immunization procedure will vary with nature of antigen for soluble proteins 250 microliter of antigen containing 50 to 100 microgram of quantity is mixed with 250 microliter of friends complete adjuvant inject this mix intraperitoneally in valve c mouse after 14 days repeat injection but use friends incomplete adjuvant after 14 days repeat injection in friends incomplete adjuvant on each day of 3 days before fusion mouse is given similar amount of antigen intraperitoneally spleen from immunized mouse is aseptically removed and washed two times quickly with rpmi 1640 subsequent handling is done in laminar flow spleen is placed over wire sieve which is placed in sterile petri disc spleen is gently teased with the help of 18g needle and piston of a disposable syringe sieve is immersed in medium and second few times so that all spleen cells are suspended in medium cell clumps are allowed to settle and remove cell suspension is then centrifuged cell pellet is washed twice with rpmi medium without fetal calf serum and then suspended again in the rpmi medium cell number is counted hemocytometer after appropriate dilution and staining with trepan blue dye Myeloma and spleen cells are 
separately washed with serum free medium respective cell pellet is suspended in known volume and then cell number is counted using the hemocytometer appropriate volume from myeloma and spleen cells are transferred to 50 ml disposable plastic centrifuge tube to obtain a ratio of myeloma cells to spleen cells 1 is to 10 cell suspension is centrifuged cells in cell pellet are fused with polyethylene glycol which has power to bind with water and thus can remove water molecules trapped between two adjacent membranes pg is toxic to cells and thus its addition is done in defined way to minimize toxicity and also fusion results in reasonable number of fused cells mouse anesthetized with ether and killed by cervical dislocation is placed on its back on thermocol board and is soaked with 70% alcohol a cut is made in the abdominal skin the skin is carefully removed so that the whole peritoneal wall is exposed about 8 to 9 ml 0.34 molar sucrose is injected at the midline with 15 g needle the mouse carcass is then massaged with blunt side of the forceps to disperse medium throughout the peritoneal cavity remove the needle and replace with 22 g needle draw peritoneal fluid from convenient site about 4 to 5 ml fluid can be collected add equal volume of rpmi medium cells are spin down tap the cells and suspend them in rpmi medium 0.5 ml of the cell suspension containing something around 4 to 10 4 into 10 to about 4 cells per ml are plated each well of 24 well plate these plates are kept in co2 incubator overnight for ascertaining sterility few cells are very fragile and far better care is required for their survival after fusion of cells cell population is distributed in 96 well plate these are rectangular polystyrene plates and have 96 wells normally 200 microliter medium is added feeder cells are added to each well for supporting growth of few cells these are intraperitoneal cells and plated a day before fusion these act source for growth factors which assist in growth of few cells the level of fetal calf serum is raised to 20% medium few cells are grown in head medium for at least 12 days to allow death of all myeloma cells subsequently cells are grown in normal medium individual well is monitored regularly under the inverted microscope for growth of cells and for contamination at about half confluency supernatant from such wells are screened for presence of antibody by suitable screening procedure positive hybrids are expanded and stored in liquid nitrogen positive hybrids are also cloned by limiting dilution method cloning may be repeated for ascertaining clonal nature of hybridomas stable hybridomas making antibodies can be maintained by subculturing or can be freezed in liquid nitrogen dear students by now you must be very clear how much difficult the technology of the preparation of the hybrid cells because this is a very lengthy process takes around 60 days to 90 days for making a hybrid cell which makes the desired antibody one thing should be very clear to you that it requires the trained hand unless you have experience of maintaining the cells in sterile environment grow them at 37 degree under 5% co2 environment you cannot achieve the growth of the cells animal cells they have very specialized requirement in terms of the nutrient they require the 
uh, amino acids, they require the vitamins, they require the salts, they require the buffer, they require the glucose for energy. And all these requirements must be there, but at the same time, the care has to be taken that no fungal contamination, no bacterial contamination comes to the lab or finds entry to your culture system. Essential requirement that you require a continuous supply of carbon dioxide, you require continuous supply of disposables and other requirement. And another important thing that to the cell culture lab, the entry has to be always restricted. No other person should be allowed to, the, to come to the lab because this will add a chance to the further contamination of your culture system. So maintaining sterility, maintaining hygiene conditions, accepting handling are the prerequisite for working in the hybridoma laboratory. Now I will be focusing more on the certain steps which are essentially required for the production of the hybrid cells. These include screening of hybridoma cells. That means essentially to identify a hybrid cell which is making the desired antibody. Another step in overall process is the cloning of the cells. So that will be also explained in coming slides. Another important aspect is the how to make the finally the monoclonal antibodies from the hybridoma cells. This will also be covered in coming slides. A screening refers to testing of span medium for presence of antibodies. A screening method should be standardized in advance. It should be sensitive to detect low concentration of antibodies, reproducible and should provide results on the same day. Any error in screening method can result in incorrect identification of hybrids and subsequently all exercise will be futile. A screening method is applied when cells reach 60 to 70 percent confluency. Enzyme linked immunosorbent assay is most popular method amongst all methods for screening of hybrids. In usual protocol, antigen is coated on LA separate which is then blocked by BSA or skim milk or gelatin. Culture supernatants from growing cells are incubated with antigen coated wells. Subsequently, anti-mouse immunoglobulin enzyme conjugate is added to wells. After washing of wells with buffer, enzyme substrate is added. Appearance of reaction product in wells indicates presence of antibodies in supernatant. Enzyme used for conjugation is horse radish peroxidase or alkaline phosphatase. These enzymes have good turnover number and chromogenic substrate gives colored product. Antibody production thus can be visually seen. Wells containing cells after fusion will have more than one fused cells. Thus, these must be separated from each other for obtaining cloned cells. Fused cells giving antibody signal in ELISA only needs to be cloned. Cloning is achieved by limiting dilution method. Cell suspension obtained from positive hybrids are expanded in 6 well plate or 25 cm square flask. When sufficient growth has reached, these cells can be used for cloning purpose. Cells after harvesting are counted and their serial dilutions are made so that 100 microliter of the cell suspension contains 1 or 0.5 cells in it. 100 microliter of such cell suspension is distributed to each well of 96 well plate which each well was pre-plated with 100 microliter of fetal cells. The level of fetal calf serum was maintained to 20% during culture. Growth in each cell is monitored under inverted microscope and clonal nature of growth is ascertained. Wells having clonal growth are marked and screened for presence of antibodies. Wells having clonal growth and making antibodies are hybridomas making monoclonal antibodies against antigen of interest. 
Hybridomyces are frozen in liquid nitrogen for future use. Cells are mixed with freezing mixture which contains 10% dimethyl sulfoxide, 40% basal medium, 50% fetal calf serum. Freezing mixture is cool prior to use. Cell suspension is distributed to freezing vials. Suspended cells are subjected to slow cooling and when temperature reaches to about minus 40 degree centigrade, the cells are placed in liquid nitrogen which has a temperature of something around minus 180 degree centigrade. During slow free cooling process, in presence of cryoprotectant that is the dimethyl sulfoxide, cells dehydrate. If dehydration is not controlled, it can lead to formation of ice crystals inside of the cell and this can damage the cells. Thawing is done quickly at 37 degrees centigrade and immediately cells are washed for removing dimethyl sulfoxide which otherwise is toxic to cells. Cells after thawing are then cultured. Monoclonal antibodies can be produced in vitro as well as in vivo. In vitro method requires large culture of hybridomas in tissue culture flask or hollow fiber reactor. Using anti-mouse IgG affinity column, monoclonal antibodies can be purified. Alternately, hybridoma cells can be intraperitoneally injected to bulb C mouse where these cells will form acides. Acides are good source of monoclonal antibodies which can be purified by using antigen linked affinity column. Dear students, if I want to summarize this complicated technique of uh, hybridomal technology, it essentially requires the synchronization of various steps in production of uh, hybrid cells. It requires synchronization of the immunization of mouse. It requires synchronization with the obtaining the sufficient number of myeloma cells required for the fusion with the spleen cells. It requires the obtaining the feeder cells at the time of fusion. It requires subsequent culturing of the fused cells and getting the only few cells selected in a proper system. And also it requires the screening whether a particular cell is making the desired antibodies. And if so, then one must clone them. And whenever a positive hybrid is there, it essentially requires these must be cared and also must be stored for future use. And once a hybrid cell is obtained finally, these can be grown in culture, these can be stored in liquid nitrogen and whenever a worker requires, one can always thaw them. So thawing is also a part of the hybridoma technology. So that means one must know the art of fusion, one must know the art of uh, culturing of any cells, one must know the art of screening, one must know the art of freezing the cells, one must know the art of thawing the cells and one must also know the art of handling the animals, specifically the bulb C inbred mouse which are required for the uh, production of the monoclonal antibodies in vivo situations. At the same time, even culturing of the hybridoma cells under cell culture conditions can lead to the production of monoclonal antibodies. Of course, the purification of monoclonal antibodies, the strategy for it will depend whether the, these are produced in vitro or they are produced in vivo. I must thank all of you for listening to this particular lecture and whenever you have any problem, you can always contact me through my email that is ys underscore rajput at redifmail.com. Thank you.